You may be setting a goal for yourself and you're, you're hesitant to set that goal because you're like, I just don't know how I'm gonna make that happen. How is that gonna be possible? Forget it, don't worry about the how. Reasons come first, answers come second. Step up, be a leader, take charge of your life. We are what we believe, you know? So, so if you've gotta change your beliefs, if you have some beliefs that are not serving you in your life, get rid of them ASAP. You have unlimited potential and you can tap into that. Hey everyone, I'm Tatiana and today you are in for a treat because I'm gonna be sharing with you the success formula. That's right, success broken down so that you can create success in your life. So I recommend watching this video from start to finish, make the time to do that and take notes. A lot of what I'm gonna be sharing with you has been influenced by Tony Robbins. So if you enjoy this content, make sure that you Go and check him out, learn from his content, attend his seminars. I'm gonna be sharing more about him and how you can learn from him at the end of this video. But we've gotta get started because we have a lot to cover. So success principle number one is clarity. Bottom line is that if you don't know what you want, you will never get it. Clarity is power. You need to get clear about what it is that you want to achieve. People tell me, Tatiana, I wanna become successful. No, doesn't work that way. So that's way too broad. Success in, as a term, it's just too broad. You need to get clear. What does success mean for you? What does that look like? Can you measure it? We have this powerful system in our brain called the reticular activating system, RAS for short. And basically what its purpose is, is to allow us to just focus on what's important because a lot of things are happening in the world and our senses can go crazy and get overwhelmed with everything that's going on. You know, just feeling like the bottom of the chair, um, the smells, uh, the things that I can be looking at right now. And so it allows us to focus on five to seven things at a time. At least that's what humans do. We focus on five to seven things at a time and we focus on what's important to us. And we have the ability to program the RAS system. And the way we do that is by getting clear on what's important to us. So I'll give you an example. You may have had this experience where you're in the market to buy a new car and you finally make a decision on the make, the model, the color of the car. And then all of a sudden, once you've made that decision, you go out and you see that car everywhere as if everyone's driving that car. You notice it more. In my case, for example, Stefan and I had decided to buy a dog. We haven't purchased it yet, but we want to get an Australian Shepherd. And before I had, we made that decision, I never noticed that breed. I never even noticed it on the streets. As soon as we made that decision, every day when I would go out on a walk, I would see three to four, five Australian Shepherds. Now, is it possible that all of a sudden everyone's buying Australian Shepherds? Yes, but what's more likely is that they were always there. Those cars were always on the streets. Those dogs were always there. It's just that I never noticed them because I didn't make it important. So once I got clear on what I wanted, my reticular activating system started to notice it. And in many ways, I believe this is how the law of attraction works. It's not like you say that you want something and all of a sudden it just lands on your lap. No, it's that when you get clear on what you want, your reticular activating system now has direction. It knows what to focus on. It's gonna be doing work, your subconscious, it's gonna be doing work anyways. But if you can tell it what you want it to be looking for, it will do that. It will work around the clock to make it happen for you. And opportunities are everywhere. You know, there is an abundance of opportunity, but we just don't notice it. And when we get clear on what it is that our goals are, what it is that we want to achieve, all of a sudden we notice opportunities and we start seeing things happening for us in our lives. Serendipity, um, seeing things just coming into fruition and it's because we got clarity. So setting goals for yourself is a great way to do this because it forces you to sit down, make the time to get clear on like, what do you want out of life? You know, what, what de defining what it is that you want in every area of your life, setting goals for yourself, getting very specific with your goals. Now it's important that you get specific. If you say, Tatiana, I want to make more money. That's your goal. Well, I'll say to you, Hey, here's a dollar. Now get out of here. You know, you got to get specific. How much more money do you want to make? Um, because whatever you ask for, you know, that's what you will receive. Um, so very specific. Now, when you're setting goals, I want you to avoid the tyranny of the how. You may be setting a goal for yourself and you're, you're hesitant to set that goal because you're like, I just don't know how I'm going to make that happen. How is that going to be possible? Forget it. Don't worry about the how. Reasons come first, 
answers come second. Set your goals for yourself and you'll figure out how to achieve them, I guarantee it. So clarity is power, that's number one. Number two, become your own leader. People tell me all the time, Tatiana, I need a mentor or a coach in order to become successful. And I'm thinking to myself, step up, become your own leader. Stop being this weak person who needs someone else to help them become successful. No, realize that you have something called potential and you've harvested it, it's inside you. And it's waiting to be unleashed. It's waiting to be commanded out. And you have all these powers. You are a powerful, strong, capable person. Um, and you have the ability to achieve whatever it is that you want to achieve in your life. But you need to step into the role of a leader and become the leader of your life. Don't rely on other people. Don't wait for other people. Honestly, you're gonna be waiting a lifetime if you're waiting for someone to just walk up to you and say that I'm gonna coach you, I'm gonna help you, I'm gonna lead you towards your success. No, forget that, like that just doesn't happen. Okay, so step up, be a leader, take charge of your life. Now, Tony Robbins has something called the three mandates of leadership. It would be helpful for you to take these on now that you're the leader of your life. Number one, See things as they are, not worse than they are, okay? So we have this tendency, whenever we set a goal for ourselves, something that we've never achieved before, and because we haven't achieved it, it's a bit scary because we don't know if we can achieve it or not. We don't know what the outcome will be if we try. And so then we start thinking about worst case scenario, right? We think about all the things that could possibly go wrong. And we don't really see things as they are, we make it worse than they are. And so what we do is by seeing things, seeing the worst case scenario, we're kind of setting ourselves up. We're doing this, our subconscious mind is doing this so that we don't even have to try. Because if we don't try, then we don't risk failing. And ultimately we want to avoid failure subconsciously. So you wanna make sure that you are noticing this if this is coming up. You're noticing that, you know, let me make sure that I'm seeing things how they are and not making them worse than they are. Now, number two is seeing it better than it is, okay? So not seeing it worse than it is, actually seeing it better than it is. So it's noticing where you are today and creating a compelling vision for yourself in the future. What it could be, what you could achieve, what you could create, what could you could become. So seeing things better than it is, so it gives you excitement, it gives you a vision, it gives you something to work towards. So instead of thinking worst case scenario, maybe you're thinking best case scenario, and that's gonna propel you to move forward. Now number three is make it the way you see it. Okay, so you have this vision for yourself, that's what you wanna to work towards. And this comes down to strategy, action, and momentum. Taking action to achieve it, to create that vision. So those are the three mandates of leadership. Now this brings us in to number three, the power of belief. Now I can't emphasize how important the power of belief is in your life and in achieving success. This is the reason the rich get richer and the poor get poor, is when you start to gain momentum, right? An object in motion stays in motion. So Tony Robbins has something called the success cycle. And I'm gonna put a picture up for you. So on the top left, you're gonna see something called potential. On the top right, you're gonna see something called action. On the bottom right, you're gonna see the words results. And on the bottom left, you're gonna see the word belief or certainty. So how much potential does a human have? The answer is unlimited. You have unlimited potential. It's actually fascinating because we don't even know how much potential human hold, humans hold. There are things that were once seen as impossible that later became possible because human beings have achieved them. World records are being broken on a regular basis. So science can't quite define how much potential we have. Really, it's just incredible. So humans have unlimited potential, okay? but do our results in life reflect the potential that we have? No, 
oftentimes we, we don't have good results in life, right? That's why we're trying to achieve more success. We're not happy with our results. Now, does it mean that if we take more action, we're gonna see better results? Not necessarily. So really, it starts with your belief. Your belief is where uh, everything begins, where the cycle begins. So if I don't have much belief in something, how much potential am I gonna unlock? Well, I'm gonna tap into a little bit of potential. And if I tap into a little bit of potential, how much action am I gonna take? Not much. And if I take a little bit of action, my results are gonna be poor, not very good results. And if I have poor results, what's that gonna do to my belief? Well, it's gonna reinforce the belief that, hey, this doesn't work, let's not even try, right? So if you have this belief where it's like, you set a goal for yourself and you, you're kind of wavering, you don't have full belief that if you do X, Y, and Z, you will achieve those results, then you're not gonna tap into your fullest potential. And if you don't tap into your fullest potential, you, you end up having this horrible cycle that's just not gonna work towards your success. So I'll give you an example. Say I want to lose 10 pounds, that's my goal. And I know and I have belief that if I do intermittent fasting in the morning, fasted cardio, if I do have a big salad every day, if I cut out sodas, um, if I do all these things, then I have certainty, of course I'm gonna lose 10 pounds by in the next two months. Of course I'm gonna lose the 10 pounds if I do all these things, as long as I stay consistent and I continue gaining momentum. Okay, so if I have full belief that if I do X, Y, and Z, I'm gonna achieve my goal, then, then how much potential am I gonna use? I'm gonna tap into my fullest potential. And if I tap into my fullest potential, how much action am I gonna take? I'm gonna take massive action. And if I take massive action, what are my results gonna be? I'm gonna have great results. And if I have a great results, how's that gonna impact my belief? Well, if I have great results, it's gonna reinforce that belief that if I do X, Y, and Z, I'm bound to lose weight. And then next time I want to lose weight, I have a proven record that if I do X, Y, and Z, I'm gonna lose weight. So I have more belief, it reinforces my belief. So everything starts with your belief. If you don't believe you can do it, if you don't believe you can achieve it, you won't. And that's why I try my best on this channel to kind of be your guys' cheerleaders because I know that oftentimes you may not have belief in yourself and maybe you don't have supportive family or friends. So if I can be your online friend to kind of sh share with you that yes, you have belief, You're, you have something called human potential which is so powerful you're capable of achieving whatever it is that you want to achieve. I want to help support you in that, but you have to create that belief for yourself. I'll give you another example. I love examples. Roger Bannister, in 1952, he was the first man to ever run a mile in under four minutes. Okay, so prior to him, nobody was ever able to achieve this goal. Um, and what he did in order to achieve it is he, every day, he visualized himself running and running the four minute mile, running that mile in under four minutes. He visualized himself successfully running it in under four minutes. And so he visualized it enough that he started to build a belief that he could do it, okay? And that's how he ended up achieving it. So that's the power of visualization. This is another principle. I'm not gonna add it to this list or we're gonna be too long, but visualization is very, very powerful. Basketball players will tell you that. Visualizing, getting the shots in the hoop. You don't have to physically do it. They've even done studies where if you visualize it, you have the same improvement as someone who's actually practicing, which is just incredible. So he visualized it in order to achieve it. Now what's crazy is that 46 days later, the next man achieved the four minute mile. Prior to that, no one had ever achieved it. And 46 later, the next man did. And then later, many people have achieved it. Now high school kids run the four minute mile, a mile in under four minutes, which is amazing. So why was it that prior to Roger Bannister, nobody had ever achieved this goal, and after him, many people achieved it? Well, it's because, because he achieved the goal, now everyone else in the world all of a sudden had the belief that this was possible. All of the people in the world realize that, hey, if this man can do it and he's a human, we can do it too. So they all benefited from his original belief in himself. Even though he didn't have a reference from someone else prior to him that achieved this goal, he visualized, he created belief within himself because we all have that power and he was able to achieve his goal. Now everyone else after him. Another example, I love elephants, my favorite animals. Little baby elephants, when they are at the zoo, and they have been trained uh, since they're babies, they get 
chained to the ground with one leg. One leg has a chain around it and it's chained to the ground. And so they do this because they know that once those little baby elephants realize that they can't move anywhere because that chain is holding them to that one place, they start to give up, right? In the beginning, they try to break free, but they start to give up. They realize that they don't have the strength. They don't have the power to break free from that chain. Tra chain. <laughs> and then what happens is once they grow to full size, they still hold that belief. So they grow to full size and these, these creatures are 8,000 pounds, you know, some of them 13,000 pounds. They certainly have the potential, they certainly have the physical strength, the power to break free from that dinghy chain, but they don't because they have the belief that they're incapable of breaking free from that chain. So that goes to show that, you know what, like we are what we believe, you know, so, so if you've got to change your beliefs, if you have some beliefs that are not serving you in your life, get rid of them ASAP. You have unlimited potential and you can tap into that. Number four is to take massive action. Persist until you get the results. Okay. So if you set a goal for yourself and you're trying something and it's not working, don't just give up, change your approach. Try something else. If it's not working, change your approach. Try something else. If it's not working, change your approach. You continue to change your approach until you get the results. And so many people end up giving up on their dreams, end up giving up on their goals because they think that it's just going to happen like that and they don't realize that you're going to have to continue to keep trying until you succeed. You have to make it a must. It's not just something that you, you want, it's something that you make a must in your life and if it's a must then you will do whatever it takes. If you can't find the way, you make the way, right? That's what Tony says. So um, it's very important to realize that like there's no such thing as failure except when you fail to learn from your experience. If I were to, you know, say you have a kid and your kid is learning to ride a bike for the first time, never been on a bike before, okay? Do you expect them to all of a sudden miraculously be able to ride the bike? No, you expect that they're going to fall and they're going to get up and they're going to try again. And that's why you get them knee pads and elbow pads and wrist guards, right? You anticipate that they're going to fall, but you realize that that's just getting them one step further, one step closer to success, one step closer to learning how to ride the bike. It's part of the process. Falling is part of the process. And eventually, if they continue to keep trying, they continue to persist, they will eventually succeed. And pretty soon, riding a bike will be a piece of cake. They'll never fall again because it's just, it's in their body. They get it. They know how to do it. It's instinctive. And so you have to realize that that's part of the journey. You know, if you have any big goal in life, it's, it's not going to be a piece of pie. And that's why it's so rewarding. If it was so easy to achieve your goals, it wouldn't be as rewarding right? So it's, it's the struggle, it's the growth, it's the continuance, it's the persistence that makes the entire journey rewarding. It's who you become at the end of it. Now, if I were to ask you, why is it that you didn't succeed in a previous school that you had? You may tell me that it's lack of money, lack of time, lack of connections, and all of those things are resources, right? Time is a resource, money, people, resources, all of those things are resources. But failure is never a lack of resources, it's a lack of resourcefulness. This is what Tony shares. It's never a lack of resources, it's a lack of resourcefulness. Because I can guarantee that I can point out someone somewhere in the world that had fewer resources than you. If, you're, if you're, uh, your thing was time, I can find someone with less time than you. If your thing was money, I can find someone with less money than you that managed to succeed at that goal. And they managed to succeed not because of the resources or the lack thereof, but because of the resourcefulness. They figured out how to make it happen. So I have people that email me all the time saying like they don't have enough money, they need this, they need that, but really, if you want something, you will figure out how to make it happen. You know, if you need to come up with money, if someone's holding a gun to your head and they're saying that you need to come up with $500 today or, you know, they're taking, you know, they're taking your wife or whatever it may be, you're going to figure out how to come up with $500 because it's a must, okay? So when you want something bad enough, when you make it a must, you will figure out how to achieve it. Now, the last thing I will mention with taking massive action is the power of proximity. 
If you want to, say, open up a restaurant, my recommendation is go and work in a restaurant. If you've got to be a busboy, be a busboy. If you've got to be a server, be a server. Just getting inside the restaurant and getting the experience of working in that environment will be extremely powerful for you. And it's going to allow you to maybe establish some connections with the manager, with the general manager, with the owner, and you can learn from them and you can tell them, hey, like I'm interested in opening up my own restaurant and establishing a relationship with people. So proximity is power. Whatever it is that you have your goal, if you can find a way to get in there, if you can find a way to maybe work for someone, you know, yes, you may have to trade your time for money, but do it so that you can learn from that person, learn from being in the environment. Um, it's going to be extremely beneficial. You're going to learn more from being in the environment than you were, will learn in five years' time of reading a textbook on how to open restaurants, okay? So, you know, that's how I really built my business was just like immersion, like doing it, just taking action and learning as I went. And that's what I would recommend for you guys. Number five is bring success to what you do. Now, this was inspired by the late Wayne Dyer and I think it's really beautiful. Success isn't something that you go and get. It's something that you bring. You can bring success to whatever it is that you're doing. If you are bagging groceries at a grocery store, you can bring success to that, okay? You can be that person who wakes up and hates their job and goes to the store and you're in a bad mood and you're grumpy and you're not doing a good job or you can decide that, you know what, this is the opportunity I have in front of me. This is what I have at my, that's available right now. I'm going to bring success to this. I'm, I'm choosing to bring success to whatever I'm doing. I'm going to go to the grocery store. I'm going to be the best damn bagger there ever was. I'm going to double bag. I'm going to bag this cashier, this cashier, this cashier. I'm going to put a smile on my face. I'm going to talk with the customers. I'm going to make the most out of this job. And so I think this is really just a spiritual principle is just realizing that success isn't something you go and get, you know, it's something that you create, you bring it to what you're doing. And the beauty of this is that you can do this. You know, a lot of you may be watching this video because you hate your jobs because <laughs> you don't want to continue working at your job and you want to achieve financial freedom to get out of it. But I'm here to tell you that your job is a blessing. Your job is an opportunity. If you can bring success to your job, that will not go unnoticed. Oftentimes we just, we go about our days and we're, we're saying that we want to achieve success, but we're waiting for the perfect opportunity. We're waiting for the perfect business so that we can work our asses off in that business and be successful with that business. Instead of saying that like, listen, I have this job right now. It's not something I love, not something I want to do for the rest of my life, but let me make the most of it. Let me bring success to what I'm doing. And if you bring success to that job, you do your best, it doesn't go unnoticed. Management will notice and you will get promoted. And success breeds success. People will want to be around you because of the effort that you put in, because you're giving it your all, because you're, you're not just treating your job as a means to an end. And it doesn't mean that you have to be in that job for the rest of your life. It's going to open up other doors for you. But when you tell the universe, listen, this is what you've given me right now, not my first choice, but this is what you've given me. I'm going to show you that I can make success out of this. I can bring success to what I'm doing. I can bring success to raising my children. I can bring success to emptying the dishwasher. I can bring success to working as a janitor. Once you show the universe that you can do that, then the universe will say, hmm, wow, you handle that very well. Let me give you something greater. Let me give you something bigger, right? If you have a kid and you go to uh, McDonald's, and or McDonald's is a bad example. You're going to an ice cream shop and your kid orders, you get your kid an ice cream, you get them two scoops. Now, if they walk out of the ice cream shop and they lick the ice cream and the ice cream falls and the, the, the ice cream falls on the ground and you go back into the store to buy another ice cream, are you going to buy them three scoops of ice cream? You say, mommy, look, there's three. Can I get the three scoops? You're going to say, heck no. You can't even handle two scoops. Why am I going to get you three? Show me first that you can handle the two scoops and then I'll get you three. The same principle in life, okay? You have opportunities all around you. Don't think that you don't have anything. There's always something that you can bring success to. It doesn't have to be big. We tend to make things big. We need to have something big. No, 
There's like, like I said, I empty the dishwasher. I don't like cleaning the kitchen. I don't like cleaning the toilets. I don't like doing those things, but I bring success to it. I make it enjoyable. I do my best because I know that it's going to help me breed more success in my life. So remember that. I'm going to share with you a parable that Wayne Dyer shared, and I think it's just really cool. It's an old parable, and it goes like this. There is an old cat walking down an alley, and the old cat encounters this little baby cat, and this baby cat's running around in circles chasing its tail. You know how little baby cats do that. They run around, and they chase their tail forever and ever, and it's quite entertaining. And the old cat says, what the heck are you doing? And the baby cat says, well, I went to cat philosophy school, and I learned cat philosophy, and I learned that two things, that happiness is the most important thing for cats, and that happiness can be found in the tail. And so I have a theory that if I just chase my tail long enough, I can finally catch it, and I can lock in eternal happiness forever. And the old cat says, hmm, interesting. Well, I never had the pleasure of going to cat philosophy school, but I've been roaming, roaming around these alleys and I've actually learned the same thing as you, that the most important thing for cats is happiness and that happiness can be found in the tail. But what's different between you and I is that I learned that as long as I just mind my own business and confidently move forward towards working on what's important to me and moving towards my dreams, then happiness will follow wherever it is that I go. So I think it's a really beautiful parable. It's illustrating that you don't have to chase happiness. You don't have to chase success. Just confidently move forward with your dreams, with what's important to you, and it will follow. And it just really goes to show that like everything you have is within you. You have it within you. You have that potential. You just have to command it out of you and get clear on what it is that you want. Okay, we're gonna move on to the last one because we are getting long here in this video. I have so much more that I'd love to share, but really, again, you know, you guys can learn from people much more wise than me. I'm really learning a lot from Tony, Wayne Dyer, a lot of these great people. The last one is what Tony calls the science of success and the art of fulfillment. So success is a science. It's something that can be measurable. It's something that you can calculate. You can figure out the formula right? But fulfillment is an art. And I wanted to end with this note because, you know, if you're anything like me and many other people, if we're trying to become successful, sometimes we delude ourselves into thinking that success is going to bring us happiness, joy, fulfillment, all of these things that if I earn this amount of money, if I get this house, if I, you know, achieve this, then X, Y, Z, then I'll be happy. And it's so often that when you do achieve those goals, you actually realize that mm, it's a bit hyped up. Yeah, it's sure in the moment, it's exciting. You buy a new car and there's a thrill, it smells like that fresh new car smell, but that doesn't last. You know, you move into a home with a beautiful view, you appreciate the view for a few weeks and you start to get bored of it. You start to get accustomed to it, take it for granted. It's called the law of familiarity. So anything external is never gonna bring you happiness. And I just wanna make sure that you guys understand that. Yes, strive for success, be the best you can be, unlock your potential, be a gift to the world, to other people, go for it. But Understand that the art of fulfillment, it's an art. It's not a step-by-step -step process. You have to figure it out for yourself. And that's really where fulfillment lies. It's not in achieving more. It's not in, 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 in checking off your goals list. It's in just fulfillment, in being happy with yourself, being content, your relationship with God, with other people, your spirituality. It's, it's the love that you have for yourself. It's, it's so many things and focusing your time and energy on success, but focus equally on your fulfillment. Trust me, like I, I'm speaking from experience here and that's really where I'm at in my life right now is I'm just, I focused a lot on success early on and it's great, it served me, but now I'm realizing that, you know, the principles of success are not always the principles of fulfillment. So everything I shared with you today in this video, yes, it's going to help you become successful, but it's not always going to help you 
to achieve fulfillment. So there are many things that you will learn on this journey that are going to help you with success, but you have to be wary and you have to kind of have this uh, pedometer uh, where you can kind of understand, you know, what, what is this costing me? And having a balance, figuring out what your balance is. Robin Williams is a really great example of this. He's a man who inspired people, had reached millions of people, made so many people laugh and cry, and it's just an incredible person. And he achieved so much in his life, in his personal life, in his, uh, in his uh, professional life. He's just a really a high achiever. So he checked off all the boxes, but he was so focused on achievement. And meanwhile, the guy who's always smiling on camera has you know addiction to drugs and alcohol and who knows what other kind of mental health challenges but probably wasn't putting as much focus on that as he was on success because success breeds success right that was the success cycle so you have to remember that when you become successful it starts to become easier to be successful at other things that you do you start to get momentum right and so it actually, you know, in the beginning, success can be a battle, but once you get momentum, it becomes easy. And so when something becomes easy, it's easier for us to focus on that, on our work, on our professional careers, rather than on the things that really need attention and hard work. Our relationship with our spouse, our relationship with our children, our mental health challenges, our addictions to drugs, alcohol, and who knows what else. Those things are much more challenging to work on and also aren't rewarded publicly the way that success is. So just a reminder for you guys on this journey um, because I care for you and you don't want to be that person who's like ultra successful but is miserably depressed or doesn't have good health or just, it, it, you know, money does not solve a lot of those challenges in life. So take care of yourself along this journey. So that wraps up this video. I don't know how long it was, but I hope it was worth your time. I believe it was. If you enjoyed it, please leave me a comment down below. Let me know what was something that I said that hit you the hardest, something that was more powerful with you. With you. Maybe share with me a goal of yours. You know, I can hold you accountable. Share with me a goal of yours that you are committed to achieving and tell me how you're gonna do that. Um, I think sometimes it's really valuable to publicly declare your goals because if you just have your goals kind of hit, you know, in your, in your mind, you're not um, accountable to anyone but yourself. <laughs> and we will usually let ourselves down. So publicly declare your goals. Um, and give me a thumbs up, share this video if it, if, it hit, if it touched you, share it with someone that you know that could help them. And again, this content has been massively inspired by Tony Robbins. Um, I recently attended his UPW event, Unleash the Power Within, his online event. So now with COVID, everything's gone online. And I did it from the comfort of my living room and it was fantastic. I played full out. I encourage you guys to attend. It's, it's an incredible deal, you know, for what you're paying, just the value. It's, it's life changing. So Tony is just an incredible human being. He's given so much to the world so generously and he's not going to be around forever. So the way I see it, like go and attend his events, get to see him, um, uh, benefit from his teachings because he's really special and he has a lot to share. Uh, Wayne Dyer as well, he's already passed and some of what I was teaching uh, in principle number five comes from, from Wayne. So definitely want to give credit where, when credit is due. So thank you again for watching guys. I love you and have a fantastic week. Bye-bye.